Hey y'all, Farmer Dre back at it. Today, what we're doing is we're gonna have to go finish, go ahead and finish cutting these pipes that are going for the high density apples. I never got to do it the other day. I ran out of time and I, you know, always gotta do something, always comes up. We can't always finish a big project here on the farm. So what I did, I'm gonna go ahead and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting most of these pipes and then we gotta go set them out in the orchard and we're gonna go ahead and measure out every 10 trees or every 30 foot. We're gonna go ahead and put them every 30 foot. Beat him in with a skiss here. So I'm gonna get to cutting and you guys stick around. If you guys haven't already, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, like this video, comment down below if you guys have any questions, comments, anything, leave them down below. And you guys stay tuned for the ride. Farmer Nate, recorded? No time. So we just got done laying down the high density apples, not the high density trellis. And uh, the pipes were laid down. We got, I think we had to, we did 90, 90 posts. We got to lay down. We just started. And these are the high density trees that have just, um, they started budding out. I think there's a lot of them that did come out and I'm starting to see a little bit of a uh, cedar apple rust on these guys. This little disease. It's not really a disease. It's just uh leaf leaf spots and i want to show you guys what i'm going to get into in the topic of talking about the weeds around the trees real quick we got to finish the high density put the post in pull the wire and uh one thing i didn't mention in my uh why plant high density apples is that these geneva rootstock apple trees there are these apple trees that are grafted on a geneva rootstock they're not very self-standing so we just had a few winds come through and you could tell these trees are all leaning over so that's why it's very important to put a high density to whenever you plant high density to trellis them so over here yesterday i had uh five little my five little cousins come over for a job shadow and i made them pull weeds you know that's not the that's not what farmers do all day but i made them pull weeds so this is what they pull the weeds over here and just to tell over here you guys can see how the how bad the weeds grew and a farmer could spend thousands of dollars a season per acre just hiring someone to pull weeds because the weeds is probably one of the biggest pests or one of the biggest problems every farmer probably deals with. I mean, it is, they're obnoxious. They grow wherever they want. I don't blame them. That's why God created them so they can grow everywhere. So that's why we started moving towards using herbicides and, you know, different kind of, um, you know, like glyphosate, chateau, you know, pre and post emerging herbicide is to take that cost down per acre and it makes our farm more efficient in the long run. And there's no, there's no more competition for the trees. You know, we kill all the grass and you know it, it lowers down the pest uh, problems i mean insect problems so i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys our peaches that i did i haven't been able to spray anymore because of all the rain we've been having but tomorrow and the next five more days after that's supposed to be nice sunshine so i'm gonna go ahead and connect the spray and do all these trees about the high density and in block three i don't know if you guys can see all the way down there we got to do all those trees as well so i'm gonna take you guys to our peach trees and show you guys what the uh, glyphosate did you guys are probably being impressed. So I'm standing in between block three and block two it's on this side. And these are the trees I did pull the weeds from and prune them. I just didn't have time. Like I told you guys, it was raining and it, I didn't have time to put the, round, uh, the glyphosate around them. But over here, these are the trees that I did. And you could tell these trees are a lot bigger to start with. But look how good that glyphosate worked. And this is pretty impressive. We put down the turkey manure and we've already had from right here where my thumb is all the way to the tip. I say good six eight inches of new growth and what that glyphosate does there's no more competition to the tree the tree takes all the water takes all the nutrients and it just keeps a clean tree around them so these are the trees that i did the glyphosate around and i'm telling you what i'm pretty impressed 
this is our first year trying that stuff out and i think we'll just come through with the mower and just it take you know our headache off of doing the weeds and there's a little bit of uh johnson grass still growing through it because i didn't put any uh, pre-emergence down i just did the post-emergent and we i think i'm going to come have to come through later on whenever this becomes more obnoxious and knock it down with some more glyphosate so these are the trees i am very impressed by the how that worked and how well it worked out and now what i got to do with these peaches i got to train them up later on like in june or july come through and um prune out the new the new growth that is not growing good and i just realized i never pulled off get off a subject here but this peach has never been on there but it's set I'll go ahead and pull it off i don't want to risk any new growth in these young years to having fruit set so take another look at these guys i'm very impressed by all these trees we just got to come through tomorrow now clean them up around three to five foot around the tree gig makes our life a whole lot easier and why not try to be more efficient you know you only have so much manpower and so much manual labor and that's why we're you know we're starting to grow more and more every year but this the, the our, our labor is still the same and it's probably going to be the same for the next few years so that's our movement to being more efficient in the long run by you know keeping the weeds down that's our biggest problem with, and i mean if you have a lot of big weeds if the weeds are three or four foot around every tree then you're losing production and you're losing growth because them weeds need nutrients and stuff to grow and the water so very impressed we're gonna do the whole orchard like that keep them weeds down and uh we'll get it done in the next few days so now i'm standing in our uh block of older peach trees these peach trees are probably 22 23 years old and some of them have died in between them so they're not at full production but they said did set fruit this year and we got what we got to do is probably come through here and uh thin them out and these are the size they're about the size of a probably quarter you know nickel nickel to a quarter so i'm very excited that we set fruit this year i know a lot of people didn't have that privilege and the, you know the weather got the the frost and the cold weather got there all their peaches well i'm excited for this year's peach crop i know I, this is probably the first time i showed you guys the peaches i always tend to jump over them i don't know this is i love peaches by the way nobody doesn't know that so this year's peach crop is going to be great it's looking great we just got probably got to come through here and thin them we, you, the way you thin a peach is you want at least you know a fist i got a pretty big fist but you know four to six inches in between each peach and probably come through here and uh just thin them out the ones that are probably too close and the ones that are in the middle of the tree as well because you want them sweet juicy peaches so we are going to go ahead and start beating in the post first i got to make a mark at three foot that's how far we know how to go in the ground and then we are going to we got the hydraulic attachment my dad's running the skid loader and we're going to get the job done So that was a pretty much fail. We didn't think about that the skisser doesn't go that high. So what we gotta do now is we gotta put the uh, attachment on the front of the tractor. We gotta quick attach, like exactly like on the skisser. We had this done whenever we bought the tractor. We're gonna go ahead and put it on here and see what we gotta do. And hopefully we'll beat them in. So now we are connected. We are going to uh, go ahead and give this a try. I'm hoping the tractor does uh, work this time because if not, we're in a big of an issue so we're gonna go ahead and start beating the first post in like i told you guys to finish this um 900 trees we got to beat in 90 posts so we're doing uh every 10 tree we're doing a tree a post so let's get to it hopefully the tractor gets the job done
Alrighty, so now the first post is up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have to go all in on the other, on the other end, put the, the another post in, and then we're gonna run a, a string across, and then come through and put all these these other ones in the center here. So that went pretty pretty uh, pretty easy in. We have a lot of rock in this area, so for us, the reason we chose to put metal post instead of wood post is because we have a lot of rock and uh, drilling the holes the auger through rock isn't very fun at all. I mean, it's pretty much impossible. We gotta get the digging bar and dig it out. So these metal posts are gonna make our lives a whole lot easier. And uh, you know, tractor does all the work. We just had to have to cut them up and we're gonna pull a string across and get the job done. We're gonna put the, the make sure the rows are straight. So it's gonna be fun. For the ones who have rock, we don't have rock, you guys, guys about to be more thankful. This is the pain we have to go through. So I don't know if you guys heard me in that last clip, but for all you guys who have perfectly good soil with no rocks and good old top dark top soil, you guys should be very happy. We sit on a lot of uh, red clay with a lot of rocks. We grow ro more rocks here. We're in Southwest Missouri here in the Ozarks. We grow more rocks than dirt. So over here in this part of the orchard, we got about what, about seven acres of good. We got about one foot of good old, you know, good rich uh, loamy, loamy clay that is not very, you know, rocky. But other than that, we have pretty thick fragile pan underneath that we have to always break through. So that's why, like I said earlier, that's why we chose to go metal. Even though we gotta bring the welder right here and weld the clips and everything else, it makes our, our lives a whole lot easier. To, and it makes more sense to beat them in with a the tractor than to put, you know, the big old 12 inch wooden post. So what, we're, what I'm gonna do now, I have to um, put a string across from one end to another. And the reason we're doing that is my dad wants the trees or the post to, and the trees to line up perfectly straight. So that whenever you look down the road, it's, it's a row of perfectly straight trees and the posts are all the same. So I'm gonna pull this line across here and uh, we'll see you then. So now the rope is all the way across, and uh, this is pretty much what it's gonna look like with the wires, but once all the posts are up, I'm gonna come through and double check this, and uh, we'll see what it does. Alrighty guys, that is pretty much it for today. I know we didn't do too many big projects. This is probably the biggest project we're working on, and it's gonna take a few days to finish up, or maybe a month or so, it depends how busy we are. Then we got to do Val's blackberries as well. So we have too, too much stuff going on, but slowly and surely we're going to get it all done. The apple trees need to be trellised and the leaders need to be tied down by the summer solstice, which is June 30, 21st. That is the longest day of the year. And after the longest day of the year, the apples start to, they go in that reproductive stage. So Whenever the apples get into the reproductive stage, then they start getting that bud initiation on these new, uh, where these are there. So hopefully, if we do everything correctly, next year we should see some crops off, crop off this, this uh, 900 trees we planted. So if you guys haven't already, go ahead, smash that subscribe button, like this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, anything, let them down below. I'm going to try to reply to all the comments. It's kind of, uh, kind of a pretty tough job i gotta pretty much watch my phone all day but you know it is what it is so that is it for today i want to say thanks for watching and until next time you guys have a good day